What's happening tennis fans? Nate here. Today we're talking about the number one strategy to get more wins right now. That's right. Immediately, not something that's going to take a lot of time. This is a way of thinking about strategy, moving on the court, and most importantly, when you're hitting the ball. So first part I'm going to go over is deciding when to hit the ball. And then this is also going to dictate the way that you move. Now I'm going to talk to you about why it's important to decide when you're going to hit the ball, not necessarily how you're going to hit the ball. So in tennis, we have shapes and we have drives. All right. And so our shapes, just like it sounds like you have to make a shape and this particular shape is an upside down U or a rainbow. All right. And what this means is that when you hit a shape, the ball has to be descending as the ball is working up, whether it be heavy top spin or, or relatively you know, soft, as the ball descends, you shape it back up and you put that big arc on the ball. These are the shapes that we hit. All right. Now the other way of hitting the ball is a drive and the drive is shooting your arrow moves on a straight line and this is hitting the ball while it's ascending. So if the ball is hit just before it hits its apex would be taken on the rise at the apex is while it's ascending. And that is your arrow. You're being really aggressive. So I'm taking the ball earlier. Typically I'm getting a shorter ball and I'm hitting it off the bounce and being more authoritative with the shot. These are the two types of shots that we see in tennis, really the only two. All right, so now you'll, you, a lot of times this gets kind of messed up because we think, all right, I get it. Shapes are going to have more topspin and drives are going to be more flat. That's not it. it I just, we're just talking about when to hit the ball. If it's ascending, right, you're driving. And if it's descending, it, you're shaping, you're lifting. All right, and the reason this is important is because taking away time from your opponent is a key strategy in tennis. It's not just all about power. It's about how to take away time with positioning. And that positioning takes us to the way that we move because when I decide to hit the ball also dictates the way that I'm going to move. So sometimes shapes, you're just scrambling out to the corners. You can't help but let the ball descend as it's fall on you hit it. That's fine. Otherwise it can be strategic. So here with the X, if I'm dropping back at an angle, and I'm allowing the ball to descend some, as it descends, I can hit that high, heavy top spin that gives me plenty of time to work back to center. Through the 90s, we saw this a, an absolute ton from the Spaniards that dominated clay court tennis with the Spanish Armada strategy. Use this ball, let it descend, play really high and heavy up to the backhand, typically the backhand of the opponent. Now, if I'm driving and I know that I gotta move earlier, if I get a weak reply, instead of just waiting back here behind the baseline to attack, what I'm gonna do is cut the corner off the court. You can see this triangle here, and this is what I wanna cut off. So as I'm moving up to the ball, as the ball reaches its apex, I'm being more authoritative, and I'm hitting that arrow. I'm using that arrow to drive to where my opponent is not. All right, so think about this. The, deciding when you hit the ball decides how you're going to move on the court. So let's go back to this X that I put down on the court for just a moment. Too often players move linear with the baseline, parallel with the baseline, right? So they, they're here and they just move, boom. It's like the old Atari 5200, right? It's like we have these lines that we have to stay into. Well, no, this is a dynamic game. Let's work outside the lines. If I just hug the baseline, unless I'm Federer and I have an, the amazing ability to pick the ball up quick off the rise, I'm just taking away my own time. But with that being said, we see the reverse where players just play too deep in the court and now all these short angles are available. But look what happens when I use movement on an X and I cut off the corners, right? So if I drop back to play defense here, boom, but then suddenly I do damage and I get a short ball to my backhand, I can move on this same line and attack really, really quick. All right, so I can sit here and recover and use all of these lines. If I get a, a, a big heavy ball that I need to play some defense on, I can drop back, boom, hit the backhand from here, and then quickly recover back. Same exact idea. If I get a short reply on the forehand, boom, right? I'm just constantly moving on these diagonals and not moving parallel, all right? If I'm looking to give myself time, I drop back, maybe I shape, I use that big heavy topspin. And if I'm looking to take away time from my opponent, 
I move her in these diagonals and I do so by cutting off the corners of the court. So I get asked all the time, well, what are the pros doing, right? Well, they are driving, almost predominantly driving. You'll see some of the players like Holger Rune and Sitsi Pass that will try to play closer to the baseline and like to cut off the corners more consistently than say maybe the Nadals and the Dominic teams of the world. But even the Dominic teams and Rafael Nadals, they are still driving as much as they can from back here. And that's because the ball is moving at a trajectory. It's very rarely descending when players are at the baseline. Now they do have to shape sometimes strategically and then sometimes they do so out of necessity. So in the footage that, I'm, that you're going to see now, this is Diego Schwartzman actually working through forehands on the X drill. All right? And from here he's working on moving forward, cutting off the corner, taking the ball early attacking and then dropping back and then playing nice and heavy. All right? And this combo of playing super high and heavy and then looking to take the next ball earlier and cut off part of the court is the number one strategy you can be using now. Give up space, play that big heavy forehand deep to the opponent's backhand, recover back to the middle on an angle, not, not back behind the baseline. Because if you do this, you play nice and deep and then you recover here, you're gonna be late for the short ball reply. From here, recover, boom. And then this way, if you get your short ball, whether to the forehand or to the backhand, you can quickly jump on it and use that drive. All right, I know it seems a little bit complex. Give it a go. Just really watch the ball and decide, are you hitting it while it's ascending or if you're hitting it descending and the feet will follow. That's the nice part about this. Seems complicated, but it gets relatively simple. Thanks so much for watching. Guys, hit that like button, subscribe, share with a friend. That helps us a ton. No, it's not something we talk a ton about, but when you share it with somebody, YouTube loves that and they start populating the video. So that would be incredible if you did that. In return, we have left a free trial to player court where you can meet players of the same level or even sign up for lessons in the comment section. Be sure to check that out and I'll see you next time. Take care everyone.